<laughs> My shirt's on backwards. We're just gonna pretend that's not a thing and tuck that right in. <laughs> Anyone can make this recipe with their shirt backwards, I promise. That's how easy it is. Hey guys, I'm Chrissy Tracy, coming to you from a cabin in Connecticut, and today I'm going to be making fried oyster mushrooms, collard greens, and cornbread. One of my favorite things to do is veganize classics and comfort food. So the fried oyster mushroom recipe that I'm bringing to you guys today is an adaptation of your classic fried chicken recipe. So obviously, you know, fried food isn't the healthiest, so I wanted to make sure we accompanied the fried oyster mushrooms with something that was actually healthy and delicious as well. Typically collard greens are prepared with pork and lard, but today what we're going to do is just use a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of vegan butter, and uh, some smoked paprika and some other seasonings with some onion and garlic to really make those collard greens to come together. We're also going to be making a honey mustard dipping sauce. One thing I really love about this recipe is that I think it's an easy transitional recipe into veganism, or even if you just want to eat a little bit less meat on a weekly basis. It's a, it's a fairly easy recipe for everyone that is busy or tired during quarantine, and it's a good, comfortable pick-me-up. So I really enjoy this. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna start with our collard greens first. Get this pot. <laughs> a Little bit of a struggle. And we're gonna start off with about two tablespoons of olive oil, and we're gonna heat that over medium heat. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a half an onion. I've already diced it, so it's ready to go. This is actually a honey sweet onion, so it adds an extra boost of flavor to this recipe. But white onion would work. Same with any, just like sweet yellow onion, Spanish onion, whatever you have. Just no red onion. I think that changes the flavor a bit too much. And we're just gonna cook those down for a little bit until they're, you know, a little translucent. And we're gonna then go ahead and add our butter and our garlic. Good vegan butter is a little bit hard to find. I'm adding a tablespoon of Country Crocs avocado oil butter. It's just my favorite. It's like creamy, like you'd expect out of real butter. So I use it in like my baking recipes and stuff like that as well. Now our onions are translucent, fragrant, so we can go ahead and add our garlic and cook that down for just a minute or two. We are just using one clove of garlic in this recipe. And while our garlic cooks down, I'm going to go ahead and add my spices. I like to toast my spices. It um, really brings out the flavor and the dried herbs a lot more. Today I am using about a teaspoon of smoked paprika. In a Jamaican household, we don't measure, usually. <laughs> We're also going to add about half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, about a half teaspoon or a teaspoon salt, and then we've got this old school black pepper crank that I love gonna go ahead and give that a couple cranks and we're just gonna stir that all together now that that is all cooked down and fragrant we're gonna go ahead and add our collard greens we have about a pound of collard greens here stems removed you don't want those coarse stems in there we're just gonna go ahead and get that in the pot it may seem like a lot but this really cooks down I really like collard greens because I feel like they truly soak up all of the flavors that you cook them down in. I also like the texture a little bit more. I wouldn't mind using kale, but kale tends to be a little bit more bitter in my opinion. And again, we've addressed like the toughness of the collard greens in this recipe by removing, you know, most of those stems. And I'm just combining from the bottom of the pan upwards as the collards cook down. As you can see, they've already kind of gone down in size since when I initially added them and they're starting to get well coated. So I never grew up really eating collard greens. It's more of like I would go to friends' barbecues and things like that, and their parents will be like, oh, I know we don't really have anything for you, but the collard greens are vegan. So <laughs> I am going to add three cups of vegetable broth. Um, this brand of veggie broth is really full and very tasty, and it's gonna actually add a lot of flavor to our collard greens. So we're just gonna add three cups of that. We're going to give that another stir, and then we're going to cover our pot and move on to the next part of our recipe. So at this time, our collard greens are cooking down. They will be cooking for about 30, 35 minutes until they soften up a bit and immerse in all of those flavors that we added to the pot. Seventh-day Adventists, that's the religion I grew up in. A core staple to that religion is kind of like treating your body like a temple. One of the things that was heavily 
uh, talked about was vegetarianism as like the best option, the healthiest option. That was, you know, a big reason as to why they raised all seven children um, on a vegetarian vegan diet. You know, growing up vegetarian, you could never find anything when you went out to eat with friends or family. It was like, I guess I'll have a salad and fries. Like, that's kind of boring. So I, you know, had this energy sparked within me to kind of change the game within vegan food a bit and, you know, try to make plant-based as fun and as delicious as possible. So now that our collard greens have cooked down over the 35 minute period, let's go check on them. As you can see, they pretty much um, reduced in size by half. I'm just gonna kind of give it a nice stir to make sure all the flavors are really immersed all over the collard greens. That's good. This is the point in which you would add a little more salt and pepper to taste. I think it could use a little bit more salt, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a little bit more in there. After your collard greens are done cooking, they should taste a little bit smoky, a little bit bitter, but that bitterness is also kind of balanced out by the saltiness of the greens as well. They should have a nice bite to them, but they should not be too hard. If they're still hard at this point in time, then you just wanna cover uh, with a lid and cook for another maybe five minutes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover those back up. And we're gonna head over and make our very simple honey mustard sauce. I believe in simplicity and this honey mustard is just that. It comes together with just five ingredients and that's all you need to make a very delicious honey mustard sauce that will accompany your fried oyster mushrooms. You can use honey if you'd like in this recipe. I chose to use agave, that way it's completely vegan. It's equally as delicious with honey, so it's whatever you, you know, like better. So first we're gonna start with a quarter cup of yellow mustard, and then we're also going to add four tablespoons of agave. And you can kind of go crazy with this because that's what makes the sauce extremely delicious. And we're gonna add about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder about a quarter to a half teaspoon salt. I'm terrible at measuring. I just keep shaking until my ancestors tell me, shh. <laughs> and we're gonna give a nice crank of black pepper and we'll stir that up real well. And it'll be a nice golden color due to the agave or the honey. The color kind of reminds me of turmeric to be honest, look at that. <laughs> At this point, you can just set that aside as we wait for the oyster mushrooms. That's the fun part. So we've got these beautiful, odd-shaped, alien-like oyster mushrooms. This is about eight ounces of oyster mushrooms right here, a little bit over. So I chose to use oyster mushrooms for this recipe because the texture, kind of similar to chicken, I would say. It's kind of got that bite, that chewiness that chicken has. So now we're just gonna go ahead and create some beautiful little shapes you're gonna kind of just wanna go ahead and follow the guide of the mushrooms themselves. You have to make sure that when you're cutting them, you're keeping the stem intact to a degree so that it can kind of come together in like this cluster. And you'll see they'll be kind of like bite-sized pieces like this. I was inspired to do this recipe because um, there was a chef on Instagram that had given a full kind of history lesson or overview of fried chicken. You know, he made a comment about the fact that he knew so many black people that were afraid to eat fried chicken in their workplace. And so they would hide outside to eat it. And I actually personally know people that wouldn't eat their lunches in the workplace either because they felt like, oh my God, I'm gonna be judged for eating this fried chicken. And not because it's unhealthy, but because of the origins of it and the negative connotation that, that came with you know, the whole fried chicken and watermelon thing. So that chef gave a little bit of a backstory explaining that you know, back in Civil War era, black women would make some money by, you know, making some home goods like fried chicken and biscuits and selling watermelon by the train tracks of, you know, the workers that were passing through their towns to try to make some money. So they found like an in innovative way to kind of overcome the oppression that they were facing and make something of it and make some money for their families. That drew the inspiration for this dish and I thought, Hell yeah, eat that fried chicken. You know what I mean? Like that's how it, that's how it made me feel. And uh, that, that's when I came up with this recipe and, and experimented with it, with it over the summer. I've been to Jamaica quite a few times and every time I go, it's like the one place I can travel to and I can always find vegan or vegetarian food readily available, which I absolutely love that. That's hard to find, right? So a lot of people are like, huh? Like, how is that where you find vegan and vegetarian food? 
It's everywhere. You know, Jamaicans eat a lot of root vegetables and things like that. Veganism has become a whitewashed kind of thing. Honestly, the fastest growing population of vegans in America is actually black Americans. You know, Wu-Tang Clan, Beyonce and Jay-Z, you know, Erica Badu, some people I look up to, they're really doing it. Last year, Beyonce did a uh, plant-based challenge with her followers to encourage people to try going plant-based for like a month or something like that. And that's just so cool to me. At this time, we're just going to set our mushrooms aside and we're going to prepare the flour mix and the buttermilk, the vegan buttermilk. So basically what you do to recreate buttermilk is you do a cup of almond milk. And I'm just using a Silk Brand Unsweetened because you don't really want the sweetness with this particular recipe. And the other thing we're going to do is add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. What's going to happen there is that the apple cider vinegar is going to cause the almond milk to kind of curdle. So we're just going to give that a good stir and it's going to change form in a minute or two. So if you're making this at home and you maybe don't have almond milk on hand, another great alternative is oat milk. If you're going to use any alternative milk, always go with unsweetened. It would you know, be a little bit of a different taste, but you can also make a flax egg. I would suggest two flax eggs. What that is is a tablespoon of flaxseed meal and three tablespoons water. That together makes like a egg-like substance. Then you'd be able to dip your oyster mushrooms into that mixture and then dip them into the flour so that they'd be well coated and that works perfectly as well. Another alternative if you don't have apple cider vinegar at home is you can also use a tablespoon of lemon juice. It just needs that acid to really change the composition of it. Okay so now we're gonna get started uh, with our flour mix. So again Quite simple, I use uh, five different spices for the flour mix. I've got about a teaspoon of paprika. I would not use smoked paprika if that's all you have on hand because that'll lend itself to a totally different flavor. We also have a teaspoon of garlic powder. We have some Cajun seasoning. So this is essentially a mix of a little bit of paprika, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of dried oregano, just some of those green dried herbs and it makes it really delicious and gives it a little bit of a kick. We've got a teaspoon of salt and we've got a teaspoon of onion powder. And we just combined all those spices with one cup of flour. So one cup of flour will work for eight ounces of oyster mushrooms. Now it's time to batter our oyster mushrooms. I'm going to take one piece at a time. Again, they might fall apart a little bit, but that's just because of the natural shape of the mushrooms. Just going to dredge that in the buttermilk. And you can add a couple pieces at a time. You just want to let it sit for like a minute or two and really soak in that mixture. And this will just make sure that the mushrooms are well coated and ready to receive the flour mix on top of them. So now that those have sat in the buttermilk for a little bit, we're just going to go ahead and flour them and call it a day. And then just place it on your plate and repeat until all of your oyster mushrooms are coated. And you want to make sure you kind of get the flour all in there. So I just kind of Keep tossing flour on top until it's really well coated. While we wait for the rest of the mushrooms to kind of dredge in the buttermilk, what I'm going to do is just fill up a pot with some vegetable oil. Oh, sorry, my tippy toes. <laughs> so this was about 48 ounces of vegetable oil. And we're just going to put our pot on high heat and give that a couple minutes to make sure it's reached about 350. That's the best for frying. Our oil is nice and bubbly. We just want to make sure it's at about 350 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my thermometer in here. I know I should have an instant read thermometer. Okay. But I don't. <laughs> okay. So it's at about 360, a little higher. So now we can go ahead and fry our oyster mushrooms. Again, you're just going to want to place about three or four pieces in at a time. And you know the oil is ready when you hear that nice crackling and that nice sizzle. And you're just gonna wanna watch those and let them fry until they're golden brown. You'll hear a lot of extra sizzling because mushrooms in general are higher in water content than, you know, say chicken or another vegetable. I just love the sound it makes when it's frying. It's, it's an ASMR experience. <laughs> this is about the halfway point, so we want to wait until these are really golden. You know, a lot of times uh, people might look at a recipe I offer and it's like, ah, that's not that crazy, that's not that complex. And then my thought is that's the point, right? 
nobody if you're at home and you're short on time you want to make sure that you can make recipes that come together quickly but the beauty about cooking vegetables is that it's it's fairly simple it's really about the seasoning blends and really making um, the right flavor pairings so that it brings out the natural flavor of the vegetables that you're using and that's what's important to, about vegan cooking it's not so much the fact that you know it's vegan it's it's the fact that you really have to make sure you flavor and season your food very well I just want it to get a little bit more golden so I'm just gonna let it sit probably another minute or two I check on them often because there's a fine line between like golden brown and crispy and burnt so you gotta like really make sure you're paying close attention to them so this is what you'll want the end result to look like it's really golden orangey in color and that's how you know it's ready you can just move that over to your cooling rack and there you have it we have fried oyster mushrooms look how delicious those look I can't wait to eat these <laughs> we're gonna put a little honey mustard sauce in a little side dish and we're gonna add a couple of our fried chicken pieces to the plate and also a nice spoonful of these collard greens. One thing I wanted to highlight today was this cornbread recipe. Can't forget about the cornbread. It just pairs really nicely with this dish. This recipe was actually inspired by this lady named Val who used to bring fresh large trays of cornbread to church on Saturdays growing up. She would actually do something really interesting with using whole corn kernels. So that's what I've used in this recipe. And I think I've gotten it pretty close to how she used to make it. We're gonna go ahead and lastly add that to our plate. And we're just gonna go ahead and finish that off with a little agave or honey drizzle. Whatever floats your boat. And there you have it. Okay, so I mean, this is a beautiful plate, yes, but we need a little parsley, just a little more pop of color going on here. So I'm just gonna run outside to the little deck garden and grab some fresh parsley. It is pouring, but we've got so much beautiful Italian parsley out here. I got to use it. Oh God. Okay. Wow. I just tried closing the wrong side of the door. <laughs> I just wanted to make the dish a little more dainty, a little more beautiful. So we're just going to go ahead and plate the parsley. Again, the more color, the more healthy I feel like it is, even though it's not. <laughs> I'm not going to be civilized and I'm just going to go ahead and go in with the uh, fried oyster mushroom. Grab a little of that dipping sauce. A1. Super crispy, super crunchy. I'm sure you could hear that. Like this is the bomb. Go ahead and try our collard greens. Those are really good. There's a little bit of a kick at the end of it, but there's that smokiness from the smoked paprika that really just brings it together nicely. It's so good. And then our cornbread. This is Val's cornbread right here. <laughs> and that drizzle of agave is just so good on top. All the flavors just mend together so well in this dish. Um, if I were going to do some drinks, I would probably do some Jamaican limeade with this. You get some limes, get a lot of brown sugar, some water. Um, that's my childhood right there. I definitely implore you all to go ahead and try this out. Again, it's quick, easy, and it's 100% vegan. I, I just wanted to make a quick note that my shirt's still backwards. 